Okay. Welcome everyone. Hang on, I'll just get this um it is because we are going to do a little segment on this. Okay. Because we are going to do... Yep, all good. Martin, T. Dunn and the Skyquake Warrior. Thank you very, very much for tuning in. So, Agent Cal Gibbs. Martin, how are you, mate? Now, for those of you that think I don't wash, I'm wearing a checkered red shirt again tonight, but it's a fresh one. Okay, this is the extent of my wardrobe, being Army Surplus's best customer. <laughs> so let me just get that sorted. What we're going to do tonight is we're just going to do a very basic knot tying and rig making stream. All right, I'm just going to show you a few different things that are out there. Let's just get that there. That's good. Okay. Now that it's getting hotter, we're able to go outside. Oh, great. We'll just leave the modem here. That doesn't need to be there, which is good. Okay. Agent Cal Gibbs, welcome. Let's just see how this looks, now that I'm thinking I'm reasonably professional at this. Oh, okay. Now when you've got a head my size, it's very hard to keep it in focus. But we'll soon find out. Oh, that's not too bad. We don't need to see the bald spot, because you'll get blinded with the reflection from the light. So welcome everyone. Thank you very much to the five people that have tuned in early. Okay. Now what I'm going to do today is I'm going to do a very basic knot tying and um, instructional um, stream and also one on rig making. What I've done is I've actually got a line that you can see tonight, unlike last night. So this is Mark R. How are you mate? Welcome to the stream. So this is 130 pound uh, torture uh, Darby on Dacron. So Dacron is one of the old lines that had a hollow core. So what happens is, is you can push it apart going that way and it pulls tight the other way. The only problem uh, with Dacron is because the salt water gets into the middle of it, as you can see it's a multi-filament type line, okay, what that does is it tends to rot from the inside out. So everything's going great until you get that fish of a lifetime and you haven't washed your lines properly, you know. Okay, so look, um, knot tying and rig making go hand in hand, obviously, okay? Um, with your knot tying, if I can suggest one thing for your fishing, right, always try and make sure that your knots are as precise. Mark R, how are you, mate? Um... Your knots are as precise and as neat and as uh, fresh as possible, okay? So what we're going to do, alrighty, is um, we are going to do a variety of different knots. So with the knots that I'm going to show you, okay, I'm going to show you the knots that you can watch here. And then that way what you can do is go off and make your own fishing rigs. And what I'm going to do is also show you some new fishing swivels and other techniques that you can use to help you with your fishing, okay? So, what I'm going to do first though, let me bring that here. I just need to get um, some hooks out of here. So that's eight pounds. This is my fishing tackle box. This is the Pandora's box, as they like to call it. Okay, we've got some more long there. 
How's life treating you, Mark? What's happening with Mod City, mate? All good? Let's just chuck that there. Excellent. Those are the hooks that I was looking for. That's the other line. Yes, Lowy, as always. All right. We've got various floats. Okay. And we've got some more hooks there, which is good. Fluorocarbon, which we'll get through. Okay. And away we go. Excellent. That's the way, mate. So any new adventures on the highway, Mark, or same old, same old with it, or? Okay, that'll be nicely. Let's chuck that down there. Okay. Oh, really, Mark? Okay. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you some very basic knots that you can use to tie your main line, okay, to either swivels or hooks, okay? And then what I'll do is I'll show you a simple loop. So the first knot that we're gonna do, this is one of the most basic knots that I've ever seen. Rich and Leo Angling, how are you bud? Welcome to the stream, mate. So this is one of the most basic knots I've ever been shown, but it's actually quite deceptive. UKC fishing with Big Dan. Thank you very, very much, people. For coming in 10 people in here already wow thank you okay so what i'm going to do am i going to be able to push that through hang on let's just do a nice clean cut beautiful so this is a knot that's known as the centaur knot okay this was shown to australia i think it was that the 1974 brisbane boat show by a gentleman by the name of Dick Lewis, who's one of the forefathers of fishing in Australia. Nacho Pants, welcome, mate. How are you, bud? Okay, so you can see that clearly. Excellent. So this is a very, very simple knot. Welcome, Nacho Pants. Good to see you in here, mate. This is a very, very uh, simple knot, and it is actually deceptively strong. Now, I'll give you the uh, benefits of using this knot. And I have used this knot for fly tying, sorry, well, yeah, actually fly tying, but um, fly fishing and lots of uh, other different techniques, okay? So I tie like a right-handed uh, angler, but when you're looking at it, it'll probably look like, you know, left-handed or whatever. So you've got your tag end, okay, and you've got your main line. So a lot of people get confused um, with tying knots they literally tie themselves in knots trying to do them so i'll give you some basics right the tag end is the piece of line that goes through the eye of the hook or a swivel or what have you right okay your main line is the one that's attached to the spool whether it's the spool for leader your reel whatever okay <laughs> welcome nachos so when you tie your knots too even though You've got um, a very thin line, even though this one 30 pounds thicker than normal. You've always got to think like top and bottom, and then you decide when you're looking down at the line whether that's left or this is left, right? So you always have left or right. It just makes life easier for you, okay? So this is the knot. So with the centaur knot, you go over the top and under left coming out on the right, okay? And you just form one, two, three loops. Each loop just slightly smaller than the previous one, okay? So that's what it looks like. You've got your three loops there. Then what you do, okay, is put that through the middle. And what you'll see there is you'll see the three loops slowly cushion right now remember you put on the tag in see right now see how that forms <laughs> something like that nachos now see how that forms a really nice little knot that doesn't bed in on itself at any stage and then what you do is you just pull that tight 
okay, and that'll lock in, all right? So that knot is the centaur knot. I'll show you how that looks up close. Alrighty, so that's a very, very simple knot, okay? <laughs> Big Dan, fisherman by day, Elvis by night, okay? So that is a very basic knot. The reason why I like using the centaur knot is I can tie this knot at night, okay? And it's a very, very simple knot to tie. So that's the first one that we've done. Now the next knot that we're gonna do is the clinch knot. I'll show you a few others, Mark, and I'll show you why I personally don't like using the uni knot, okay? So this is the clinch knot. This is the knot that I got shown first in the 70s. Okay, hello, Peter. <laughs> right, so this is the clinch knot. Now once, now remember, so over left, under right, I call that left, this right. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so this was the clinch knot that I first got shown in the 70s. And what we would do is you would bring that through, okay, there you go. And what would happen is, okay, this knot I think had about 80 odd percent breaking strain, okay? Now, notice on this knot, what we've got is we've got the line between the knot itself and the eye of the hook in this case. So the tighter you pull, okay, the tighter that will bed in, all right, on the hook. Now, the only problem with that knot is it only had about sort of 80 odd percent breaking strain. So then what someone did, a very smart cookie, okay, um, they invented the improved clinch knot. And I'll show you the improvement. It's quite simple, actually. So with the clinch knot, what they would do, right, I'll just that down here. Okay, so what they would do, um, yeah, that's the older style. One, two, three, four, five, six, whoops, seven, okay. So what they did, the improved clinch knot, they put it back through the eye, right? Then they put it back through the loop and then the breaking strain of the knot after doing it was about 97 or 98 percent okay so that's how you do the improved clinch knot okay and this is a very simple knot that you can tie with monofilament with um braid it's a different story you've got to do different knots okay so there you go that's the improved clinch knot all right and once again you've got the tag end at the front of the knot with the eye and the hook in this case. All right. Now, the uni knot is another knot that people have um, used. Personally, I don't like the uni knot, okay, and I don't use it. I just use the improved clinch knot, or I use my braid knot. The snell knot's a different knot again, Aiden. I'm just about to show everyone the um, snell knot. Um, but good call on that because the knots that I'm showing you here, the quick knots, sorry, the clinch knots, okay, they are so that you can um, basically tie it to an eye of the hook. The snells work on the shanks. So this is the uni knot, okay? So we have the tag end. What you do is you just do yourself a little loop like this. All right, one, whoops, one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven. And what we have here is we have the uni knot. Okay, so the uni knot is more of a sleeve knot. So I can slide that up and down the line because it actually cushions around the main line and the knot comes out the back. Okay, so that's what the uni knot looks like. All right, so we have the tag end out the back. Um, I don't like using it. Uh, I've lost a couple of fish in the boat with the uni knot on heavier lines, okay? And as you can see, that's the difference with that one. Now, 
the final one that I'm going to show you, okay, and you can't tie this to um, swivels and other stuff because this is designed to sleeve around the shank of the hook, okay. This is the snell knot. So with a snell knot, you need to have a hook with either a turned up, okay, or a turned down eye so that it allows the line to go straight on the hook. If you've got a straight hook uh, shank with the eye, what it does is it causes a, a friction point, okay? So what we'll do is you need to have this so that you've got your tag end on one side of the hook and your main line on the other, right? And what you want to do is you always want to have this tag end always sticking out past the bend of the hook because if you don't it will cause headaches now you've got to remember dacron's oh well culpable thank you very very much mate ross leak how are you culpable thanks mate how are you bud welcome to the stream culp what you do once whoops once twice before dan breaks into a lionel richie solo Okay, and what this does, right, is this slides around the shank of the hook, okay, and what it does, oh that one's probably needs to cut even a bit more, okay, and what that'll do is see how that uh, main line comes out through here. Right, that's why you need the turned up or the turned down eye. If that's a straight eye, it'll cause, Mark, thank you, Mark, it'll cause a headache. Okay, so what we do now, righty, is there's some little knots that you can use on hooks or swivels, all right, and with these, they all have various pros and cons. Okay, now. There is another knot that I want to show you that you can use to join hooks to your line, okay? It was the Snell knot. Oh, well, she couldn't have done it too well, Nachos, because you escaped. Just throwing it out there. Yeah. You might have used a potato peeler to get out of that one. <laughs> anyway, right, so another knot that you can use yeah, thanks, Culp. Culpable and Lowy boxed my ears on that one. So, rightio. So, um, this is called a dropper loop. So with a dropper loop, what that does is that allows you to keep a little loop that's perpendicular to your line. It's very, very handy in... Um, who do you <laughs> it's a very uh, good way to fish when you're fishing... Um, in a boat, all right? So what we do is we have, if you wanna do a loop off this main line that is six inches long, you put your hands 12 inches apart, okay? So what we'll do is we'll bring that back through here. And then what we've got is we'll form a little loop like that. Now see how we have the two lines, right? What we want to do is we just want to wrap the lines around themselves and leave the loop in the middle. And let me show you how to do this, so one, two, three, four, whoops, five, six, seven. Now there are variations of this cross line, okay, but this is the basic one. Whoops, come on, don't be like that, we're live on stream, you know what happens, it's a streaming curse. So what you do is you put that loop back through the middle of it, like that, All right? And what you have, is you have a perfect little um, knot that cushions around itself and then what you can do is you have the loop coming off your main line right so when you're fishing in a boat and you've got vertical fishing where you're virtually up and down um, this is very handy and one of the basic rules of this is to the deeper you fish the closer you have your hooks to your main line right and if you put a swivel on top here and uh, another swivel down the bottom you'll have virtually nil line twist okay on here what that does 
is that just gives you an option. So just say you're fishing and you've got a bunch of snapper coming through and then suddenly they go quiet and then you'll have a... Um, uh, Mark, thank you very, very much for that inculpable. Um, and then you'll have like other fish come through. You can actually just change your hook size. Obviously it's a bit difficult with 130 pound line, right? You can change your hook size straight away simply by sleeving that off the loop and putting that through, but I'll show you that in a second. Now, what I'm gonna do is those knots, um, those knots that I've shown you, okay, they are all you need to, um, you know, get rigs and that sort of stuff set up with your hooks. What I will do though, is I'll throw in a little bonus here. I'm gonna show you how to join two um, hooks together so you don't have to um, crimp them, right? Now, fish in Australia like um, Mulloway, the South Africans call them um, cob. In Argentina, I think they're known as grunters and they're the Australian version Uh, I'll do that later on, Mark. I'll do that later on. I mean, <laughs> the easiest way to do that, Mark, I'll show you, right? If you want to do, hook, some people like to do that. They like to just have a hook attached to the main line. The easiest way to do that without, like, um, you know, ripping my microphone apart is just to do a snell with a really big loop. Watch. Okay, like so. A lot of the old set line fish shows in the old days would do this. So we're just going to wrap that around, okay? Like so. Bring that down like there. And then basically that's how they would fish. Right. So they would twist that around like so. That would come in there and that would just sit off their line like that. Okay? And they just put a bit of bait on there because as soon as the fish bit it, there was an instant hookup. Okay, and then you can put as many knots as you want and as many hooks as you want down the line with that. Okay, and that's what they would do in the boats. If they had, like, back in the 60s and 70s, they didn't really worry about bag limits. That's why we've got headaches now, right? So what they would do is they would put three or four of these or maybe even five big heavy leader with a heavy sinker out in the boat and they would just bait them up drop them straight over and they'd pull up three, four, five fish at a time, okay? So, now, what I'm gonna do from here, okay, let me show you how to join two hooks together. Oh, that's a big one. Oh, they've put an odd size hook in here. Well, that's handy, that well, makes it easier. All right, so what we have is we have an 8 and we have a 6 right? I'm gonna show you how to do what they call a stinger hook. Right, this is a really easy and really uh, good way to do a rig. Uh, from the surf, well, probably not a good idea with a red shirt on with red hooks, but anyway. So what we'll do is this, okay? This has got a bigger eye on it because it's a bigger hook. So what you do is you do a snell on one of these, right? <laughs> uh, three four, five, six. Bring that back through. Like so. Right. So what we have now, okay, is, right, we have a um, snell on this hook. And then what you can do is you can use that other centaur knot that I showed you like this so with the scent or not very simple um, once twice three times as someone types a lady in chat okay I've just wrapped that around the finger back through there like so whoops So see how I've done that? I've done that just to accentuate the knot, especially if you're using a really big strip bait, right? You can do it like that. Or what you do if you've got like a small fish bait, 
then what you do is you have this as close as you can to there. So what you'll do is you'll hook that into the thickest part of the fish, you wrap that around and you put that on the tag in so it's just sticking out the back, okay? And that's how that works. So with fish that are uh, a bit uh, finical, uh, finicky with, um, what's that say? Finicky with um, hooks that are joined together like we use in Western Australia, okay? Um, it just gives you an op opportunity to use monofilament because apparently the reason why they paint these hooks and that is one, red's the first colour that disappears in the water spectrum, okay? And the other thing is two, normal hooks that um, the old uh, galve hooks, uh, they give off a slight electromagnetic field. So the theory with this is when they use monofilament to join hooks, it doesn't scare the fish off as much, okay? Now, what we'll do is we'll do just a really basic rig. So, um, one of the most basic rigs that you can use in um, fishing, okay, and especially um, when you're fishing, um, you know, from a boat, more so from the boat than the beach, is you use what's called a dropper loop rig, okay? So we have variations of these um, swivels that do the job that I showed you of this little dropper loop before. Okay, so see the little dropper loop which is done with monofilament, right? Some people prefer to use swivels like this, okay, like that. So there are variations of this. So. On the beach, for example, you would just use your standard um, cross line swivels, okay? Whereas in the boat and that sort of stuff, you use what's called these um, deep drop swivels, which is just a variation of the cross line. And what they've recently introduced, which um, I've only just found out, they've introduced these sleeve with crane swivels. So, for example, what's that one? 40 to 80 pound line, okay. So what you do with this, right, is, now this is, a lot of people call it cheating, but you know, if you're starting out in your fishing and you wanna get going with your fishing, okay. What's this, 80, oh, that's 50 yards, spool of 80 pound, all right. So these are cross line swivels Hey there, GG Wildlife. Welcome, mate. How are you, bud? So what you do is you just um, put that through the uh, sleeve like so, right? And what this does is cushions itself around the main line. Now, what you then do is you just crimp that to your main line. But the biggest problem that you've got with this, okay, is... see where those crimps are on the line that will actually cause fatigue right so when you do this eventually they snap see so what you need to do and they won't show you this when they do it see how quickly they cut right what you've got to do is you've got to just try and get that to hold it no, Loey, I don't think you can because braid has no stretch and it's actually quite smooth, right? So I don't think you'd be able to crimp to braid at all, but that's a good question. So what you do with these, okay, is put that back. Whoops, we'll do a fresh one here. Let's get that. Gazza G. Hey, Gazza, how are you, mate? It's good to see so many people from the old... Um, crew coming in good mate hope you're well bud how's life treating you so what you do is whenever you crimp you've got to make sure you leave yourself one or two millimeters right from the edge of the crimp okay so that it doesn't um it doesn't cut your line okay and then what we'll do is we'll bring this back down here like so and then what you do Mr. Space Cadet, how are you, bud? Now, people, if you've just caught up on the stream from the old platform, please do everyone a favour. Don't forget to subscribe for free on here. Okay, and click that like icon so it lets YouTube know that we're all in this together. 
All right. Right, and then what you do from there is see how that's firmly fixed on the line now. And unlike before, right, it doesn't cut because you don't have the crimp right on the line. But that's the, um, that's the big issue with crimps. A lot of people don't like using crimps because eventually what happens is um, they will cause fatigue on your line. Now, I'll show you the difference with that. If I crimp this right on the edge, okay, which a lot of people make the mistake and then can't figure out why they lose the fish of a lifetime. <laughs> well, that's right, Aiden, and that's the best time to do it, mate, but you don't crimp braid, right? So see here, and see how I've crimped that right on the edge? Come on. I'm going to crimp it properly. No, let's just crimp it down. Yep, there. Yeah. So see how that's crimped on the edge? That virtually causes a knife edge effect right and that's what you don't want to do okay so that way you finally get it all together you catch the fish of a lifetime or hook into the fish of a lifetime then wumpa you crimp cuts the line and it sort of defeats the purpose of um you know doing what you're doing okay so there's just a few basic knots that we've done what i'm going to do is i'm going to go back and do chapters on these okay so that's what I'll do is I'll show you another variation with this, so you know what I mean with this. Um, 808, how are you, mate? Hey there, Connor. Welcome to the stream, bud. How you going, buddy? So what we'll do is we'll do this snell knot again, right? And only this time what we're going to do is we're going to do this second hook closer. Okay. Now we'll get this one to join. And this is going to be if you've got like a fish bait, like a half nearly. Okay. Uh, yeah, and if you've got larger species that don't like too much metal work when you're fishing, this is the best way to go. Right, one. Whoops. Two. Three. Okay. Bring that back through here. Okay. Let's bring this through. Oh, I got that jam, hang on. <laughs> and see how you have that a bit closer, right? And then what you can do is actually get this to hit the hook. It's usually better to leave yourself a little bit of line like that because that way you can use longer fish baits like muleys and pilchards and that sort of stuff, okay? So, let's chuck that there. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you some basic rigs, okay? So with these basic rigs, these are very, very simple ways to do um, your rigs now if you're just starting out in fishing and you want to keep your expenses down right and you don't want to sort of incur too many um because you can go broke with your fishing quite easily okay and if you don't want to incur too many headaches when you start um your fishing the easiest way to do a rig to start especially if you fish off jetties or piers as you call them in the states okay and, and europe um, the easiest way to do it is just to fish with two dropper loops, have a sinker down the bottom, and then you have a um, swivel up the top. You use one swivel, and if you're in especially uh, snaggy country, you won't lose as much money in your terminal tackle. Because with your fishing, if you're fishing off a bridge or a pier or a jetty or whatever, if you've got like a swivel, a snap swivel and two cross line swivels, with the price of terminal tackle nowadays, I mean, that is probably about $3 worth of hardware, depending on how good a quality you use. So, 
with most of your fishing, your bottom hook should be one foot from the bottom, okay? And you just work off the foot by foot principle. So you have your sinker. The easiest way to do a um, loop for a sinker, especially with heavy line, okay, like that, wrap it around your finger, bring that back through like so, right? And then voila, okay, there's your loop. Oh, it is bumping, it is ridiculous. You know, that's, and the thing is, post COVID, everything's gonna go up. So see that there, we've got the little loop on the bottom. What I'll do is I'll just show you how we um, loop that through. So if we're in a boat, right, and we've got a snapper lead like that, there's the little loop that I've done. So what you do is you just force that through the eye like so, right, like that. You bring that through here, and then that's how you hold your sinker on, right? Nice and simple. You don't need a swivel down there because it's not really gonna make that much difference to um, your line twist if you're using your heavy lines, right? Don't bed this into your swivel by doing that. So what happens is, see how that causes a weakness point on your um, loop there? You want it to grip around the eye of the sinker like so and then that way it won't bed in on itself and it won't snap on the way down there. So, we wanna have a first hook, okay, about one foot from the um, sinker. So, I've got a 10 inch hand span there, boom. So that's the actual mark for the first hook. Yeah, and it's just little things like that bumping, because when you fish, Especially when you hook larger fish, usually everything is in the fish's favour. So here, for example, where we fish in WA, I fish close to reefs off the shore. So if I've got 1% of my rig that's not um, spot on, it's just that 1% that the fish will use to either, you know, turn quickly and it'll snap from the impact, or, you know, um, you'll just have your knots coming apart and that sort of stuff, which is the worst thing. So, <coughs> excuse me. Yeah. Six, like that. Right, so there's our first dropper loop, one foot from the bottom. Now, with the line or the hook being so close to the main line, I don't think I'd be able to fit this through the eye of a hook because it's 130 pound, but you get the idea. Right, um, that shows that we'd be fishing in a boat in quite deep water. No, not gonna happen. And then what you do, okay, is if you've got a loop coming off your main line like this, you don't wanna have the loop that is that big that it hooks the other um, hook that you've got further up. Because what happens is when your rigs drop, they'll spiral, right? So your sinker starts to spiral unless you've got a really heavy sinker, but the hooks will spin around their main line as they're going down to the depth. Right, so then we want another hook about here, so there. Right, we'll make that there, like so. Okay, so once again, 10 inches, 12 inches there. And then what we do is we cut that here. So if this is monofilament, right, basically what we've got is a really nice basic bottom bouncing rig for the boat. And if I drop this down to say 30 pound line or 50 pound line, I could even use that same sinker, right? I could cast that out in the surf and fish quite competently with a um, set the gang hooks up the top with a West Australian pilchard and a single hook down the bottom with a single hook bait. Personally, I prefer to fish a pilchard here or a white bait here or white sprat as they're actually known in Australia. Okay, so what that does, and you know, if you're going to fish in the boat, what you basically do is you just put two six O's on here, right, with a nice piece of squid or uh, muley as we call it here, or even um, the uh, octopus or whatever you want to use and then you've got a 
rig where the hooks are closer to the main line, you won't be so susceptible to twist because they aren't too far from the main line. Okay, and what that'll do, that's just a nice basic rig that'll, you know, if it gets snagged, it won't cost you too much money in the hip pocket, you know. Now, on top of that, right, what we also have is we have, um, well, with that bumping, what you need to do is you need to use a nice stiff monofilament. So my personal favourite is Andy, even though it's really expensive. So 50 metres of Andy's now about $40, right? And it's relative. So if you're going to be using big hooks like 8.0 to 10.0, you could use that with 80 pound line, right? If you're going to use 6.0, you can get away with 50. If you've got 8.0, 9.0 and 10.0 hooks with a big lump of bait on, say, a 30 or 50 pound uh, main line, you're going to get a lot of twist, right? So, I'll show you how this works. I'll actually make a rig now, right? So, we'll do one. This is 80 pound line for the bigger hooks, right? A lot of people call this the one minute rig because you can do this rig in a very short period of time, okay? So, Andy's a very stiff line, okay, that works quite well. Um, I've been using Andy since, oh, uh, the 80s. I think it holds more world records than every other brand of line out there. Okay, and I think it's still made in America, isn't it? Is it made in the USA? I think it's still made in the USA. Right, so if that's our um, loop for the sinker, like that. Right, Sam, how are you, mate? Welcome to the stream. Right, so we'll work here. And I'll show you what I mean about hook size being important. Right. And please, people, if you've come across from the other platform, the one thing about this platform is it's free to sub. So... Please subscribe so you know when we're going live. And on top of that, also click that like icon so it interacts with, um, G'day Extreme, right? It interacts with uh, Twitch. Uh, there you go, that's a dollar fine with YouTube, right? <laughs> and then that way, what it does, it, uh, lets them know that we've got a live stream and people are watching. So, a bit like Molly Meldrum when he was on Hey Hate hey, Saturday, remember? And he didn't want to say countdown. Right away. There we go. Right, so there's our two dropper loops. See how they're roughly about a foot apart. So, 808, these are 6 so These are 6 so um, Mustard 9255 for NPNR hooks, right? And this is the exact, um, um, could be tomorrow, could be a couple of days from now, Connor. It just depends on the weather, All right? So, what we've got here is two dropper loops and see how they sit perpendicular to the line, right? After a while, you will have to change them out, but on this, okay. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Subtract. Yeah. Just click on the subscribe button, right? And click on the like button, okay? And just let everyone know what we're doing. So what you will have to do, eventually, I mean, what will happen is you'll have a fatigue point there. But with Andy being such a stiff monofilament, okay, this is an absolutely perfect rig for the boat. So what you do is you just put one uh, sink... One swivel up the top, okay, and then um, that is that's all you need to fish out in most situations. With this rig here, you could go out to say 30 or 40 meters if you want to get your smaller fish. If you want to get your bigger fish, what you'd do is you'd go back to a single hook, okay, and then you'd use either um, herring's the best bait to use out here for everything, fam. Whether it's um, snapper, jewfish, mulloway, whatever. Live herring or herring, subtract, how are you bud? Right, they work well. And this is a really good little basic rig 
And as you can see, what we've done is we find nice little dropper loops, and that will sit and spin in the water uh, in the opposite direction that the current's flowing, right? So that the um, uh, baits will stay off the hook, okay? So with this, you don't want to use too big a bait on here. A bait not much bigger than that part of the hook is all you really need, okay? Thank you very, very much, Bumpin'. So, and the other good thing is too, just say you're fishing for, um, say, uh, Jewfish and then a school of snapper come through. What you can do is you just sleeve that off, like so. Whoops. Like so, right? And what that does, it allows you to change your hooks virtually instantly without redoing a huge rig or redoing your knot. Oh, gastro, there was a huge bout of gastro going around Perth that I got told about subtract, so. And then what I can do is I can put a smaller hook on there straight away and even leave the, long, uh, the larger hook on here as well. So what that does is it allows you to change your terminal tackle to match the fish species that you're going for, okay? So, you know, with the education side of our streams, we like to do this live so that you can see um, we're not making things up, okay? And um, that way, what you've got, all right, is you've got proof that we're doing things properly because if you're not, it doesn't work. So, you know, let's just bring that back here, like so. Right, and then the other good thing about these rigs, oh yeah, subtract the whole lot. It could be worse though. And then what you can do is you just wrap that around your finger like that, okay? Put that in those little cheap sandwich bags and then what you've got there is you've got a rig ready to go when you go out in the boat or you want to fish off the beach or what have you. Now, what I'm going to do is I want to just show you um, a very basic rig that I use for a lot of different fishing, okay? So with those rigs that I just showed you, we had the sinker at the bottom of the rig. So the baits are between you and the sinker. So when you cast with that, you cast it out as far as you can. Right, and what that does is the sinker will hit first. When you do other rigs that have the sinker uh, between you and the bait, you can do slight variations that help you um, hook fish and cast um, reasonable distances. So you're either going to cast the bait or the um, sinker okay and if you've got them further apart they do tend to spiral in the air but if you have them in a um, closer proximity you know say 60 centimeters between your sinker and your bait you should be able to get both of them out when you've got big long leaders between your final swivel and your bait what that does is it causes it to spin in the air from the wind resistance okay and you may have a tangle when you um do have it like hit the um the water okay so now what we're going to do is i'm just going to get a swivel just going to show you a very basic rig Ooh. okay so with the system that we use when we go fishing what we do is um I always have a monofilament shock leader tied to the braid that I use. I've been using braid for over 30 years now and never gone back to a full mono spool. All right, so this is a really simple rig that if you want to use it on the beach, you just use heavier leader like 30 or 50 pound or even 80 pound, right? If you want to use it in an estuary situation or freshwater, you'll use say 10 pound leader or what have you, and it's really quite basic. So what I'll do is I'll just show you the basics of it with the 130 pound Dacron, okay? Now this is a sliding sinker rig, right? And with the sliding sinker rig, this is really simple, okay? So you can use any of those knots that I showed you before to do this. What I'll do is I'll show you the centaur knot again, just because it's so easy, right? 
and then as soon as I've said that, something will probably go wrong as we're live on stream. Right, like that. And then what you do is you bring that back through. Okay, like so, forming the knot. Right, then slide that down gently. That'll lock in. Right. Okay, so what you do there is fishing from the beach. You don't want your line too close, right? You don't want your line too far. A lot of people like to have rigs where the sinker slams down to the knot on the hook. I don't. I find that I catch a lot less fish than when I have a gap between the hook and the swivel that I'm using with a sinker sliding down to the swivel. So with a sinker sliding down to the swivel, you can put a little plastic bead that will protect your knot. So it's very simple, right? Once again, just measure how far you wanna go. Right, so there, that's about 50 centimeters, which is about standard. You being serious, subtract or? <laughs> It's one of the first things we got taught at school. So, one, two, and three again. Right. That didn't work. Yes, it did. Let's bring that in here. All right, that's locked in beautifully. So, what we have now is that's your leader between your hook and your swivel, okay? You can use the centaur knot, you can use the improved clinch knot, uni knot, whatever you wanna do, okay? The only um, variation with this is if you don't like these clinch type knots, you do a snell knot on your hook. Now, there is a variation to this, right? With the variation to this, what it is, okay, is some people like to use a um, ball sinker or a bean sinker or a barrel sinker sliding between two swivels, okay? So, um, bumping, uh, I've used the Centaur not quite a bit actually, so I don't know which streams you were sort of um, watching, but yeah, intermittently, I, I use a variation of knots to show people, but yeah, um, you know, it's not really a knot that some people like to use. They think it's far too simple. Hey, Gavin, how are you, bud? Welcome to the stream. Um, I mean, the four, five, six, seven. All right, this is the improved clinch knot. We'll do the variation. Uh, top chat is just um, people that are more engaged in chat um, subtract. So, from what I understand, but I'm still finding out myself, mate, as I'm working through this process, you know. Good to see you, Gav. Okay. So, and of course, this is 130 pound Dacron, which is purely for visual purposes, all right? So what they'll do is, I've done the Centaur knot. Yeah, so that's the Centaur knot, that's the improved clinch knot, okay? So what you want to do is you'll put that through here. This is the sinker that I've got closest, but everybody knows what a um, ball sinker or a bean sinker is. There, you know, that'll fit through. And what you do is you just tie a swivel down to the end and your sinker slides. So what you do is you'll cast out, okay, and you'll retrieve your line, right? And that'll be sitting there with your bait here. Okay, usually the sinker buries itself under the sand. Then what happens, the fish takes the bait and it turns, and then it'll slide through the eye of the sinker as it turns in the sand, and then one part, it'll hit the other swivel, and the fish will set the hook itself. A lot of people that fish uh, mow away off the beaches like to use these rigs, okay? So look, um, that was just a very uh, impromptu um, stream just on some basic not tying and rig making virtually for beginners or anyone who cares to listen, really. So what I might be doing tomorrow is we might be chasing whiting on surface poppers, okay? So I'm just gonna see what the wind's doing in the morning and then we might be doing a beach stream in the afternoon. So um, it'll be a fairly early stream if we're out chasing the whiting on the surface poppers. I will be on the water by about 4.45 or maybe 5 a.m. 
oh, we'll bump in. Some people do that, but they'll do that with a smaller sinker, right? You can you can buy the special easy clips, as they're called, but what I did say on that is just imagine that was a ball sinker or a bean sinker, okay? And then um, something on that subtract, right? So, yeah, just use a smaller one with a smaller opening, but they you can put those easy rigs with the clip, okay? Okay. Um, I know a lot of people that just do it like that as well. Obviously, you don't use a swivel that's too small for the eye of the hook. Sorry, for the eye of the sinker like that, okay? You've just little basics as well. All right, people. So, look, um, thank you very, very much for tuning in. What I'm going to do is I'm going to edit this before I hit the hay, and then I'm just going to include the chapters and that sort of stuff with the various knots. Hey, WA Fisherman. How are you, mate? Um, subtract, I've got a heap of content planned, mate. Uh, what I'll do is I'll do a heap of fly tying before we do the fly fishing, and then that way I'll show people how to use flies. Um, well, bumping, if that's the case, you can do, they're more advanced techniques, right? So, um, yeah, the breakaway sinkers, they're a more advanced technique. You've got to try and do it so the length of the leader with the hook clips into the sinker, and then that way when it hits the water, and the plastic sleeve slides up the stainless steel main shaft that dislodges the hook. Okay, hey Martin. So yeah, look, they're just some basic rigs that I've been, or, and knots that I've been using for years. All right, and um, for the um, rig that I showed you with the two swivels, you can actually do live baiting with it as well. Thanks, Ross. So what that does is instead of putting the sinker between the two swivels, right, what you do is you put a float, usually like that, okay? And then what'll happen is that'll be sitting on the surface with the fish this far under, okay? And then um, when the fish hits it, it'll dive down to the bottom and the swivel will hit the top of the float and then it helps, um, it helps, um, yeah, you two bumping, thanks for coming in. Right, it helps the um, actual um, fish set the hook. It will helps you as well, but it just sets the hook on the fish. You catch a lot of Australian salmon like that using live herring and live um, little green pilch and that sort of stuff. Hey there, Valerie, we're just signing off. Skyquake Warrior, okay. Thank you very, very much for tuning in. Like I said, it was just a um, really um, short stream with basic information. And what I'll do is I'll go through and do the chapters on it. All right, thanks very much for tuning in. Bye, everyone.